floss tube. I came on to do a quick update and show you what I've been working on. I've been stitching like mad. I've been stitching a lot. I haven't been making a lot of floss tube videos though because honestly I'm not thrilled with my recording equipment right now. This is my mom's camera on her PC and it tends to get a little distorted and I don't have a camera or a tablet or anything right now that does better. I bought a couple of webcams and tried those, but frankly, they were no better than this. So I'm going to just go with this for now and then hope that down the road I can still upgrade. I've been watching lots of floss tube while I'm stitching and seeing all your beautiful projects and loving it. Um, I just wanted to show you what I've been doing. I don't think I've showed shown this piece on my channel yet. Um, I started her in June and I've pretty much been stitching on her um, pretty much since. So I'll go ahead and show her. Here is, I'm never prepared. Here is Medieval Lady by Joan Elliott. Here we go. Isn't she beautiful? I just love her. I love the colors. I love the features. Let's see if it can focus for me. Yeah. Yeah, the color's a little distorted um, because of the poor lighting in here. She's actually very vibrant. If you've seen pictures of her, the blues and the purples, which are looking very yellowed right now, um, are actually very bright, very vibrant looking colors. So, um, she is almost done. Got to finish that shawl or robe or whatever that is she has. And then on to the beading. And I haven't done beading yet. So I'm sure I'll be referring to lots of floss tube videos as I go. That will be a new experience for me. Um, like I said, she is Joan Elliott's Medieval Lady. Um, and she's done on fabric from Under the Sea Fabrics, which is called Avalon. It's a 32 count Lagana. It's beautiful, but I'm not sure that I'm gonna stitch something this size on fabric that's not color fast. Because if I take her places when I have down, you know, like if I'm waiting somewhere or if I'm riding in the car and I wanna um, stitch, you know, they, it's so easy to get dirty and I find really that my pieces need a bath when I'm finished before I you know frame them so I don't think that I would do that again I don't think I would go the color fast route unless it's something I mean the non-color fast route unless it's something small that will is quick to stitch I started her in June maybe around the 12th or so and I've pretty much stitched exclusively on her, except for the last week in June, we went to my uncle's, we went to a family reunion um, in Virginia. And my two kids and I drove to Virginia and we stayed at my uncle's cabin in the beautiful Blue Ridge Mountains. That was just amazing. And we, um, unfortunately I had bronchitis that week. And so I didn't end up making it to the reunion the kids went with my mom, which was nice, um, but I just got to sit at the cabin and cross stitch and cough. <laughs> so I had a, like a full one full day that I just stitched. So that time I was working on my Snow White, which I don't have to show you right now because Snow White is not with me. I wasn't planning to make a floss tube video, but I found myself with a little bit of time and I thought, let me quick, I want to show my beautiful lady. She needs a name. So has anybody named their ladies if they don't come with one? Um, I'm thinking Elizabeth, but I don't know if that's, I love the name Elizabeth. It's a beautiful name. But uh, Rosie, or maybe Rose. Yeah, Peyton thinks Rosie. That's good. I was going to do, speaking of Peyton, I was going to do, I've seen a beautiful conversion on Pinterest where they converted this to a dark hair brunette. And I was going to do that. That was my initial plan. But Peyton talked me into leaving it as charted. And I'm glad I did. It looks beautiful with the red, the red hair. So I really, um, I love her. I don't know that I've done any ladies before. I think she's the first cross-stitch lady that I've done. And truth be told, one reason that I 
that I did keep stitching on her because I do get bored very easily with my projects. Not bored, but I just, I like to rotate. So I usually will stitch until I just get kind of ready to switch. I don't have any like hard and fast rotating rule. Um, but I was going to try to put her in the fair. I thought I want to enter the fair and I want to see, you know, just for fun. So the local little county fair is wee tiny here. And I figured it would be a good start because, you know, there probably wouldn't be that many entered and, you know, county residents. The deadline was actually today or yesterday. Sorry, the 15th was yesterday. So, yeah, I didn't quite make it. But I was stitching with the deadline. And the good news, the bad news is I didn't make that entry. But the good news is I got a lot more finished on her than I would have otherwise. Um, I would probably be doing something else. The interesting thing, though, is I don't know whether it's because of strictly her or because I had the deadline in mind with the fair. I've enjoyed every moment of this. And there have been times when I have been tempted to start new things. And I just thought, well, let me just do some more on her. And then when I get sick of it, I will stop. I haven't gotten tired. I haven't needed a break from her. I loved her. This skirt got a little tedious. All that, what color is that? I don't know. Olive, yellow, gold. Um, so that got a little tedious, but I, I went back and forth between that and the beautiful blue and teal and purple colors, and that broke it up for me enough that I was able to, in metallics. Um, I'm out of the gold crinic, and I'm almost out of the green, so I'm actually going to have to order another spool of those before I can finish her that part of her. And then it's on to the beading. Um, so I think, yeah, I think I've said all about her there is to say at the moment. So maybe I will enter her in the next, I think the next one would be the state fair, which is the, I think I have to enter like in January. So I'm sure I can get her done in January. The state fair is a little intimidating for my first because obviously it's the state fair and there would be a lot more entries. And I have been there and seen some of their gorgeous exhibitors or exhibitors or exhibitees or whatever it is. And they're just absolutely gorgeous. So, um, but it might still be fun. We'll see. Whoops. And then now here I am, I'm talking about not stitching on things until I'm finished with her and that I haven't really pulled anything back out. However, I have been a little bit itching to stitch something Halloween-y and I hadn't really found anything that I loved Halloween-wise. Um, but I went, I was going through my stash the other day, which is way bigger than it should be. And I found this Nora Corbett's Minerva from the Bewitching Pixies line, which I love all, I love almost all of them. I think there's one or two I probably won't stitch, but she's Halloween. So I may take a break and I may start her. I'm a little on the fence. So we'll find out whether I do or not. I don't think I have all of the threads for it. And I had this in my stash as well. In fact, I think I bought this for that pattern and it's from picture this plus 32 count Lagana. No, Belfast linen. Um, and it's called Murky. And it actually looks a lot darker on this screen than it is. It's, um, it's brown and like a charcoal gray mixed in. So I thought that would go good. I hopefully the black will show up, but I mean I think it will. I think the black will show up. The owl and all the things. So there's that, and I don't have anything else to show this wet go round. I wanted to show Snow White because I did make a lot of progress on her since I last showed her. I started on the footbridge and more of the cottage, and some of the little bunnies and animals. And just like all of my projects, I have some major miscounts going on that I've got to just work around. Actually on her, I have some major miscounts too. But the interesting thing about, I say major, actually they're not that major because I was able to fudge around it. Something like this is hard. It's harder to do on these than it is on the full coverage, I think. Um, however, and I posted this, I think on some of the uh, like Stitch Mania and on my Instagram, um, it was very gratifying because 
I worked down like this way on the skirt on the edge and then somehow I, I think I came down and worked the blue and then I ended up down here and then I came back up and stitched this way. I had like this big gap right in here and um, when I met ta-da it, it went together so I had my counts were on and I that was very satisfying gratifying that was very exciting for me <laughs> I'm such a nerd but um, I was so ecstatic that my stitches lined up right coming from the top and then from the bottom so that's a good feeling but there are some there are some miscounts I don't think any of my pieces have no miscounts. I think I have some in every single piece that I've ever done. But in here somewhere, there's a problem. And somewhere else, I think in here, I think I'm off a row. But I'll work it out. Obviously, I'm not going to frog all that. Um, it's just going to have to be my own little, it's my own variation on a theme, so to speak. Um, I forget what else I was going to say, but anyway, so that's all I have to show for now. I did want to mention that I went to a stitch store a couple of weeks ago. I actually went with the intention of going to a magic store. My my son, my middle son, um, just turned nine, and he has a huge love of all things magic right now, like, you know, like sleight of hand magic, showing, you know, making things disappear. Um... So for his birthday, his grandma got him a magician's full, like, outfit, the whole, like, a suit and everything and a hat. And we took him to, I took him to a magic store. This is about an hour from here. And it was the only magic store, really, that I could find in the area. It's quite a drive, but we made it. And um, it, it, so it turns out it's owned by an elderly gentleman who has had it for maybe 10, 12 years. And it turns out he sells, he's a professional magician, does shows. He sells magic supplies. And so he showed my son, you know, and I what to get to start out. He gives lessons. But he also, half his, or a third of his store is magic, third of his store is music, and a third of his store is cross-stitch supplies. Who knew? Wow. Uh-oh. That was walking into it. Um, which my kids were like, that's three of our favorite things, because it is. That's magic for my son, and then for all three of us, or four of us, music is a huge passion, and then for mommy, cross-stitch. So that was exciting. Like I said, a little dangerous to walk into a stitchy store when you're not prepared, caught off guard. It was a very small area, but they had a pretty nice selection, actually, for the area that it was. Um, but... And I, so I bought a couple things. I bought some fabric and I bought uh, a pattern or two and spent way too much more than I was planning when I went. But what I wanted to mention was that um, he was sharing that he and his wife actually opened the store years ago and his wife was the cross stitcher. And so he doesn't know anything about cross stitching, like the technical side of it, or if I had any questions about the actual craft. But... He had on display all of her stitching over the years, all framed, and it was very touching because he started telling me all about these different pieces, and he was very aware of, you know, why she chose certain pieces that she did, even the fabric that she chose. He knew why she chose the background that she did. Um, he was able to tell about things that were going on in their life when she was stitching them. They were kind of almost like a time capsule. And I think there wasn't a real long period of time. I mean, I think it was in the last decade or two that she, that those pieces were from. I don't know how long she'd been doing cross stitch. It's not like they were from like years and years ago, but I was really touched at like how much those meant to him. That was like one of the mementos, you know, that several of the mementos that he had, from her and her life and he really missed her and he was um obviously loved her very much and missed her very much and so I talked to him uh, for a while about that and about and listened to him telling and some of the designs she had designed herself and some were from patterns and um so that was really um that was cool that was neat Peyton's got a cold over here poor baby she's been sleeping a lot of the day and watching a movie. But, um, 
so I need to get off here and snuggle with her. But um, so anyway, I just wanted to share that. That was that just meant a lot, and I hope that when I pass on, which hopefully is in a long time from now, that my some of my projects will be, you know, mementos, and like hopefully my kids or whoever will be like, what would be my kids? Who else is it gonna be? <laughs> but um, you know, just to 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 have that part of your family member and to um remember that, and some were gifts that she had given him, and he could remember co the conversation they had when she gave him that piece. And so I thought that was really special. And they were beautifully stitched. They were well done. The framing was a little questionable, but it was supposedly done by a um, professional framer. So that's my next step. I haven't had my pieces framed, but anyway. Um, not by a framer. I've, I've framed some myself very poorly. And I think I showed some of those in the post on here. So I will sign off. I'm at the 15 minute mark and I want to say happy fall, happy Halloween to everybody. If you are in a area that is getting beautiful, cool temps and fall weather, I am so jealous because it is so hot here. It is like we went to Legoland yesterday. It was 96 and it was brutal. And I'm from Florida, so I'm used to the heat, but it was like, I think it was better in the summer than it is now. So there's no fun. So we are anxiously awaiting cooler temps, which I'm told by the weatherman is supposed to be in probably November at this point. Saturday we had like, it was down in the seventies, I think for like a couple of hours Saturday morning. So we went out to the park and we're like, yay. But like by 11 o'clock it was done. It was hot. <laughs> So um, enjoy those temps and those leaves for me if you are in those areas because that's where I want to be right now. Um, so we will, and we will see you soon and have a great rest of your October. Keep stitching, y'all. Bye.